My name's Robbie Taylor and I'm the daughter of the landlady Hazel Booth from Morecambe in the 1960s. She was a landlady in two properties. One was on Clarendon Road and that was called Chevin House and another one was on Westminster Road and that was called Avondale House. Mum was very outgoing but she liked everything to be correct. She had a, a telephone voice, a bit like Hyacinth Bucket. She liked to present a very uh, formal front but very friendly. So she liked things fairly informal, but she also used to use um, a gong to call people for dinner so that everything happened on time and she had everything uh, quite regimented. She was very ordered um, because she was very serious about her business. Um, one of the reasons that she didn't like uh, anybody bringing a girl back or a girl bringing a boy back, she was very protective of her moral reputation. Um, she was... Um, very keen that her house was seen as upstanding and um, not formal but morally right. Mum came from Burnley in Lancashire and she'd been to Morecambe on her holidays and with her parents and when she was uh, 17 she decided that she was going to come to Morecambe and first of all she worked in other hotels before she bought her own boarding house and a lot of her guests used to come back year after year. She also was a very good cook but she was a plain cook but people came for the food, for the accommodation which she kept very clean. She used to get all her laundry freshly laundered so everything was clean. She used to advertise it as hot and cold running water in every bedroom and um, so she made people feel very welcome and very at home but on a Saturday she employed two people to come and help her do the full house clean and change over top to bottom and we were doing things like cleaning the stairs, emptying bins, cleaning sinks, things like that so we were given specific jobs and when we came home from school at night time we were serving the food. She, she expected everybody to be quiet after 8 o'clock. The door was locked at 11 because pubs in those days used to shut at half past 10. And most people were um, back by those times, so it wasn't really an issue. And the reason for 8 o'clock was because the kids had to go to bed. We had to go to bed. But in general, people were fairly quiet. They weren't, they weren't disruptive. They had a good time. They enjoyed themselves. They went out and did whatever Morecambe had to offer and then they came back. They might sit in the round and watch a little bit of telly, but telly, the television used to shut down quite early too. And the lounge she kept open, she would give people a cup of tea in the evening if they wanted supper or a drink. We used to make new friends each week as people brought children and things like that. So it was actually quite quite nice place to work. We, we played on the back streets with all the other children from... Um, the guest houses too so it was quite a nice friendly environment. We didn't get paid uh, however in Morecambe there was lots of ways that children used to make their own money. A lot of the time the guests used to want you to go to the shop to buy them pop and they would always pay you to do it. The, the guests mainly came from there were three sort of areas. There was quite a lot of Scottish because they used to have Scottish weeks. There was quite a lot from East Lanx and quite a lot from Yorkshire. So they were Bradford, Bolton, Burnley itself, and places like that. And then what we used to do on Westminster Road was split the coaches between between a few ho of the boarding houses so that um, we couldn't take a whole coach. We could only take 20 people. and. So there was another hotel that took another 20 and there was um, a third one that took the others. And we also had somebody that used to um, live with us. He was an elderly man whose wife had died and he moved in and he lived with us for seven years. Um, so he had his own single room and stayed there all the time. He preferred it to going into a, a care home, nursing home, and he, he felt part of the family. Now, um, she occasionally used to go for a drink in the Imperial pub. Now, that had two bars. It had um, a bar where men went and a bar where they could take women and things like that, so she'd go for a drink there. She'd sometimes um, go to a theatre. She didn't like bingo, but that was an, alter uh, an alternative a lot of people did do. My uncle used to have a boarding house slightly bigger than ours in St Anne's. So we used to holiday there and they used to holiday in ours. 
<laughs> there was only one bath, although there may have been 20 people staying, you had to book your bath. I think she may have charged for the bath. It might have been a shilling or something, and that's probably why people would not bother. <laughs> but she was also very keen on food waste. There was nothing to be wasted. So everything she did was either catering packs or fresh. And so if there was anything left, and I don't mean left on a plate, I mean left over after serving people. Um, it would go into making soup for the next day. When she was cooking three course meals every day, we also, we didn't stay school dinners when she was doing that. We had to come home and that's what we had to eat too, whether you wanted it or not. <laughs> She'd have um, counterpanes, she used to call them, but they wouldn't be the same colour as the curtains. Every week we used to get a flower arrangement delivered so that the hallway looked as though it was run as a professional establishment. Yeah. Mum loved being a landlady. She loved the holiday makers. She loved the fact that people were happy to come there. And um, she loved serving people, helping them, being as friendly as possible. And it, it became part of her life. So much so that later on, um, she actually, with her friend, and they invented a booking office where people used to come to Morecambe later booking caravans. So still dealing with holiday makers. He, importance of people coming having a, a, a good holiday in a clean professional environment.